All right, welcome back to another Awesome Pause Academy learning series uh, video series. Hopefully you've been paying attention, kind of following along, and you can look at the introductory videos to see exactly who I am, what I do, why I do it. Uh, general concepts though, um, for this particular video too, are just the main four step program. Uh, get the behavior you want. So set up the definition, then cue associate it. So say the word you want associated with that definition. Step three then is to mark it with a yes, and then step four is to pay it. Um, a verbal marker like yes is the similar you know, method as, as far as clicker training. You know, you click to actually pay, um, and they are very effective tools. Um, there are so many conflicts, there's so many schools of thought out there. I do what I do because it works, it's, it's effective, it's what works for me and my dogs. There are tons of trainers that say electric shock collars work, there are tons of trainers that say pinch collars work, there are tons of trainers that use clicker over that, and I used to, I just don't anymore. I have my mouth wherever I go, so I use that. Um, you know, so use common sense. I'm a non-aversive trainer, so that means I'm not gonna use collars, corrections, aversives to teach my dog. Um, there will be no moments in life where I have to say no, but I don't want that to be the focus. I don't wanna set my dog up for failure. So many trainers set their dogs up for failure by teaching them that if, oh, hey, you can jump up 5,000 times and then, hey, the one time you don't, then we'll give you the toy or something for it. I'd rather set them up for success and teach them if you're not, if you're just standing there, that's what off is. If you're just standing there, that's what off is because then when I need it later, it's there. Or when you're coming in motion to me, that's what come is because that's a clear definition that their dog has no questions about what come when call means. Um, you know, my dog currently is just sniffing the ground right there, but I want to be able to go, Harper, come. Yes. And pay her for it and teach her that every good decision right now actually does get paid. Um, you know, and whatever she's doing, she could have a toy and go somewhere else. Um, you know, I want her to understand certain tools in the toolbox. You know, a hammer, a screwdriver, a wrench, they don't fix everything by themselves. But you have a lot of tools in your toolbox to fix and repair certain problems. The same goes for an obedience training method um, or any communication program. We want to put a lot of tools in that toolbox. So sit is a concept, down is a concept, uh, recall is a concept, quiet is a concept, off is a concept, come when called is a concept. You know, these are all individual concepts that we want to teach. We want to be clear about them, our clear definitions, have the dogs have no questions about what the definition is, because then if my dog's over there by her toy, Harper, come! Yes! I want her to know without a doubt that that was what she was supposed to do. Go get it! She didn't even want the food. Totally fine. Go get it! Can I have it? Oh, perfect. And that's my cue to bring it to me? Yes. She can go get it again. So I have a relationship with my dog. That's what I want to build. I want to build a nice positive relationship so that she can trust me. Dogs don't contest you if they trust you. That's a hard look in the mirror kind of concept. If your dog's growling over something, if they're running away from it, yeah, they're games. They don't trust that you're going to have something better for them or that you're going to be worthwhile. I mean, that's a hard concept for everybody to take. So a lot of the trainers that use aversive type methods have that little bit of that control issue that I need them to do it now. Well, I need to, my dogs to do it now too, um, but I'm gonna teach the clear concept first so that there's no questions in an emergency situation. I'm a veterinary technician, licensed in Wisconsin. I took an oath to do no harm. That plays into this. I want to make sure I continue to have my license. Dog training is unregulated. I am not a licensed dog trainer. I am a licensed veterinary technician who took an oath to do no harm. There, that makes a difference. Um, I also want to build a relationship with my dog. I do competition so I can walk into a ring as I have done in the past and still place without ever attending a class. Um, you know, there, I, I outplace a lot of dogs that have sometimes been out there. My last dog was my first dog, Guinness, an amazing, amazing creature. Third dog in the world to have a trick dog championship, 15 titles after our names, two additional ones now being awarded posthumously. And we're still, you know, my Harper, my baby girl Harper and I, she's 11 months old. So the videos that you've seen up to this point in time, she's only 11 months old. She's a baby. She's still learning stuff. And yet her vocabulary is probably even a third of what his was already. So at this, at this age, I want to teach and build and help others teach and build. So that's what I do. If you don't agree with me, totally fine. But I teach in three main ways. That's the purpose of this video. Luring, capturing, and shaping. Shaping takes a little bit longer, but it's well worth it. I play fun games with it, with uh, teaching them how to do a box, or maybe I'm shaping them to move forward a few steps in a heel position. It, it's a very effective thing. Luring is taking a treat um, or something they like, a toy, moving them in a position, moving them in a circle, moving their nose up so they sit. If I use lures, I want to get the lure out of the picture as fast as possible. So that means I'm going to lure them, but then I'm going to start in a couple of very easy steps which you're going to learn as we go, that I'm not going to lure them so much. So then I also want to just take uh, capturing. I love the beautiful sunrise and sunset. I want to take a beautiful picture of it 
and I'm just going to say yes to it. So if she's camped out and settling somewhere, or right now she is just standing in the shade because it's hot outside and she wants to stay cool, and I'm going to say, calm, yes, and pay her for that. And here she comes over because she heard the yes. I want her to just remain calm and be settled and be okay being outside. So this is what we just continue to say as capturing behavior that's correct. Where's your toy? Good girl. Can I have it? I can have it? Thank you. Very nice. Ready? Go get it. And we build a relationship on play and on food and we kind of go from there for obedience. Harper, come. Yes. Ha ha. I'm going to get it. I missed it. I'm going to get it. There it is. There it is. All right. Good girl. Off. Sit. Flops. No. Flops. So if she's incorrect, no big deal. So. Hopefully, um, you know, we work with that in time. Again, I'm okay with some stuff that she does. She's hot, she's tired. I'm not gonna make excuses any further than that and say there's no 100%. So she leads me into my next point of this video, which is awesome. There's no 100%. You make mistakes, I make mistakes. We all do. Life is a creature. Good girl. Let's go. she didn't respond she or she responded fine she didn't hesitate she gets paid she can go off in the shade again um, that is also about training too you have to understand that the mistakes that are made if she doesn't want to do it if your dog suddenly doesn't want to do something whether it's doesn't want to or doesn't understand it I truly believe if your dog understands that they do it if they know what they do it but then there's also gonna come that time frame where they're like oh it's hot I'm tired I don't want to go on the ground I want to go lay in the shade which is where she's at right now totally fine but that means she doesn't get rewarded in this program, if they don't do something, nothing bad has to happen, but nothing good happens either. In fact, sometimes the bad thing that does might, that might happen is that we go in the house and we don't get to play anymore. So there are consequences. Um, a big misconception is that positive reinforcement training is permissive, that, oh, hey, it's just all about treats and toys and stuff. And yeah, kind of is, but it's not permissive. There are consequences. If you don't want to do something, you will not get food. You will not get toys. You will not get freedoms. You will not be able to come with me. In fact, you will be free to stay in your crate because you're uncontrolled. I don't want collars to be controlling my dog. I want her to have choice. I have choice. Uh, I can go to work and get paid and pay my bills or I can stay home and not get paid and get, lose my job and then get kicked out of my house. Um, there are consequences to actions. So that's what I focus on in my training too, is that there are consequences, but they don't have to be aversive type consequences. They don't have to be um, what some people have them being. So hopefully I can inspire you guys to do that. So Lori again, going back to those concepts, we take food, we take a treat, we take toys, we take something, and we lure them into position we want so that we get the definition. Then we can start cueing it, marking it, paying it. Um, capturing is we take the beautiful sunset. She's currently camped out in the shade. Settle, yes. And then I can pay her for that. Otherwise, we can actually start shaping behavior. So you'll see that where if I'm just walking and she starts to walk next to me. Good girl. If I start shaping behavior. There you go. Yes. I can actually start taking it and start to do what's called like a free shape on the heel where I'm not saying anything. I'm not luring her into doing it. But if I walk and she walks with me, good girl. Yes. I can actually just start yesing and paying for being with me. Good girl. Where's your toy? Where's your toy? There it is. Good girl. And those are some common concepts. So luring, shaping, and capturing that I will be covering in the video. So I just wanted to kind of quickly go over them. And so that you can actually start doing some research on your own if you want. Um, and being able to just do, again, four steps. Get the behavior you want, cue it, mark it, pay it. Um, doing some of those things. And each concept, so sit is a concept, down is a concept. Every cue, every word that you want to teach has a definition. That's a separate concept. Teach the concepts individually right now, um, very much individually. So we focus two to three minutes is my session, maybe three to five minutes if they're still working. If it's hot out, keep it to two minutes. My dog is, is spent right now. She's been working pretty much all morning because we've been making all these videos today. Um, but she's camped out in the shade. I'm totally fine with that. Um, so two to three minutes focusing on one concept at a time. And if we can do that, then we can start putting them all together, messing with their mind later, adding these you know, competition routines and these patterns. And we also will start variable reinforcement at that point where we're not paying for every single one. I will show you how to effectively fade from food, treats, toys into just lifelong habits, This, which is what you, which is, which is what you want, sorry. 
but instead of having to focus on leashes and collars and saying no to everything or stop doing that to everything, pulling back, cranking on them, you can actually learn how to say yes. So an awesome pause challenge to you as my final thought is go three days without telling your dog no. Um, it will restart for myself starting today even because I'm human and sometimes I fall back into saying no. So I'm going to give myself the same challenge as I'm giving you today. Uh, so since we're here and it's a beautiful, lovely weekend, I'm going to say go three days without saying no to your dog. Just say yes. And if everything is in the right place at the right time, um, capture it. She's doing what I want her to do right now. I'm going to show you that. She actually, hopefully you can see that. A little harder to see, I think. But she is settled in the shade. Yes! And she gets paid for that. So, being able to actually just teach your dog what to do instead, showing them that that's exactly cool, that's what they're supposed to do, can help build a better relationship with them. Harper, come! Yes! Good girl! So, with that being said, thank you for joining us for one more uh, video. And uh, as always, happy training!